Do you dream about living abroad but worry about the language barrier? Living in a country where English is spoken can make your life easier and provide a sense of familiarity. Hi, I'm Kristen. I've been living abroad for the past 20 years in more than 60 countries. And in this video, I'm going to share with you some of the best English speaking countries for expats, retirees, and digital nomads. As we discuss each country, I'll show you a quick breakdown of the cost of living, popular cities, and visa options. So that way you can visualize what life might be like in your new home. Now this first country on our list, you might be surprised to see here, and that is the Netherlands. Now many people in the Netherlands start learning English at a very young age, and by the time they're about university age, they could be very proficient. Now if you're thinking of moving to the Netherlands and you want to learn the language there, well the BBC says that Dutch is one of the easiest languages to learn for English and German speakers because it's a little bit of a mix in between those two languages. If you've ever been there, you might find it kind of intimidating to learn. I know I personally saw it as a difficult language, but fortunately many people in the Netherlands speak English, especially in some of the bigger cities uh, like Rotterdam and Amsterdam, which is one of the most diverse cities on the planet with more than 180 nationalities represented there. So it seems that English has become a pretty common language there and also is the language of business. So you'd be hard pressed to travel to many parts of the Netherlands where you won't find anyone speaking English there. Even better, the Netherlands often ranks at the top of many indices for the best places to live in the world, places with the best quality of life and also friendly people. It's a very safe country. It's very well organized. You've got a great infrastructure. It's one of those places where everything just works. And when you're able to communicate better Better in a language that you speak that makes things a lot easier. Moving to the Netherlands is also a popular choice for job seekers with many opportunities there. It means you get to enjoy a high quality of life, a strong economy, low crime rate, and very efficient transit. The Netherlands also ranks as number three of the world's most educated nations, so moving there is a smart move. The Dutch healthcare system is also considered one of the best in the world, so if you move there and get permanent residency or citizenship, then you can benefit from getting access to that healthcare system. If you're thinking of moving to the Netherlands and you want a few suggestions of places to go, then Amsterdam sticks out as a very popular destination, one of the most multicultural cities in the world as I mentioned with lots of things to do and nightlife but it is the seventh most expensive city in Europe so if you're going there then you need to have a pretty comfortable budget especially when it comes to housing. Utrecht is a beautiful city that's easy to get around by bike and has great transit as well. It's an ideal place to retire or raise a family. It's safe, friendly, and also close to nature and other travel hubs. Leiden is a smaller city with good amenities and activities to boot. It's considered an upscale university town and has some neighborhoods with rowdy student housing. So be careful to research each neighborhood first. As much as I love the Netherlands and it is one of my favorite countries, there are some things that you want to consider first. First thing is the cost there. So the cost of living can be pretty high here, especially when it comes to housing. You're looking at a cost of living of at least $1,500 per month before taking rent into consideration. And if you're just going short term there to check it out on an exploratory trip, then you might get sticker shock at the Airbnb prices, especially if you're there in peak season, such as spring and summer. I've seen Airbnbs going easily from 3,500 to 8,000 or even 10,000 euro per month in the more popular areas. Fortunately, you can get lower rent prices if you're going to be living there permanently and long term but if you're going to be in the major cities, then housing can be tight. So this is one of the downsides of moving there despite all the other benefits. The Philippines is one of the top three largest English speaking countries in the world along with the United States and India. It was actually once an American colony but of course today is an independent nation. The two official languages there are English as well as Filipino and while of course most locals speak the native tongue, English is the official language when it comes to 
business, government, and also tourism. If you've been considering moving overseas for a long time, then chances are that the Philippines has made your list. It's popular for a couple of reasons, namely the low cost of living. So many people report being able to live in the Philippines for as low as four or $500 a month, up to around $1,000 per month. But as many people on my channel have also mentioned, if you can have a cost of living of $2,000 per month, then your money will go a lot farther. Another major pro to living in the Philippines is the local people who are known for their hospitality and kindness, and I can personally vouch for this one as well. I've always found Filipinos genuinely interested in getting to know you and willing to share their time with you, favorite restaurants, and also hidden gems around town. Culturally, Filipinos also love to socialize, so if you want to meet people and have a good social life, then the Philippines is a great choice. A few places you can consider to put down roots include Cebu, a famous diver spot with modern amenities and a thriving expat community, Palawan, the best island to enjoy the Philippines' beautiful beaches, jungle, and dramatic waterfalls, and Davao, considered the safest city in the Philippines. It's relatively easy to move to the Philippines permanently if you want that to be your home. They offer a pretty flexible retirement visa that you can qualify for as young as 35 years old, and there are also relatively low financial requirements, especially compared to other countries, starting at $1,000 to $1,500 per month. And if you want to get more information on that, then I have another video on the best and cheapest places to retire in the world, and I'll link to that video in the description below. There are some downsides to living in the Philippines as far as development and infrastructure, as well as healthcare, which is available in the urban areas, but more rural areas can lack some of the infrastructure and high quality hospitals. Some places also don't have access to things like clean water. Power outages can also be common depending on where in the Philippines you're living, and internet speeds can also be very slow, especially out in some of the more remote islands. But if you're living in a more urban area, then you should be able to find speeds between 40 and 100 megabits per second on average. Malta has long been a popular holiday destination, but it's also become a popular home away from home for many foreign residents, especially from English-speaking countries such as the US and the UK. Malta has two official languages, English and Maltese. Maltese is a language with Arabic and Sicilian languages that has been spoken for centuries, but these days you'll also find that almost everyone in Malta speaks English as well. And Italian is also prominent. Malta's location between Italy and Africa gives it a unique cultural mix and 300 glorious days of sunshine per year. It's a great place to base yourself if you're curious about exploring the region, including Africa, the Middle East, and Europe. 20% of the population in Malta are foreigners, many of whom came for the laid back lifestyle and coastal atmosphere. Maltese people are known to be kind, welcoming, and warm, attracting a lot of people for that reason, but also job seekers, as depending on the type of visa or work permit you have, you can work there, especially there are a lot of jobs in the tourism industry, but Malta also has a very popular retiree visa, investor visas, and also a digital nomad visa for if you work remotely and earn your income abroad. Malta is considered a safe country to live in with all the EU benefits. Public healthcare is free for EU residents and visitors and non-European passport holders will want to purchase your own international or local private health insurance if you're going there. If you're keen on moving to Malta, then some of the best places to live include Sliema, Valletta, or for a slower pace of life, the island of Gozo. Valletta, the capital city, has the most bars, restaurants, and heritage sites. St. Julian's draws in a young crowd and is known for its nightlife. And Gozo is the northern Maltese island and the best place to get some R&R. Malta's cost of living is considered moderate with unfurnished long-term rentals starting from around $500 per month, but if you're looking for short-term furnished rentals, those can easily be more than a thousand euro per month, up to 2,000 or 2,500 euro. 
So if you're going long-term, you'll always save money. Living in Malta, however, you could come down with a case of island fever because the only way out of the country is by plane or boat. So if you want to explore often, your transportation costs can go up. Because it's small and a popular place to be, Malta is very densely populated. There's also a very high rate of car ownership. So with small spaces and narrow roads and lots of people on the road, it can feel quite crowded with a lot of traffic and also not the safest place if you're going to be cycling or riding a bike. While public transit is free for residents, the buses fill up fast, especially if you're there during the high tourism season. These little guys are a game changer. They might look like normal earbuds, but they're not. They have superpowers and they can translate other languages in real time. Whether you're trying to find your way around a new country, ordering food, or in a business meeting or other setting, maybe on a date, you can use these to communicate like normal. It will translate directly into my ear. Hi, I would like a cup of coffee, please. Me gustaría una taza de café, por favor. Excuse me, do you know where the bus stop is? Disculpe, ¿sabe dónde está la parada de autobús? In speaker mode, one person wears the earbuds and speaks while the other person talks directly into your phone. Let's try it. ¿A qué hora sale tu vuelo mañana? What time does your flight leave tomorrow? This is so cool. They support 40 languages and 93 different accents online, plus 13 languages offline. So even when you're off the grid, even without Wi-Fi or cell phone signal, you can communicate seamlessly. Whether you're traveling, working, or living abroad full time, having a pair of Time Kettle earbuds with you will transform your ability to communicate. Give them a try now using the link below this video and thanks again to Time Kettle for sponsoring this. Next on our list is Malaysia. While Malay is the national language of Malaysia, English is used in many sectors, especially in business and government, and you'll find it to be widely spoken throughout the country. It's even spoken in rural areas, although you will notice a difference in the pronunciation and accent. Malaysia is a beautiful country with modern cities contrasted with ethereal natural landscapes. It's a melting pot of cultures, a mix of Malay, Chinese, East Indian, and indigenous people, which has had a very positive influence on the food, culture, and also general acceptance towards others. If you're interested in living in Malaysia, then you're definitely not alone. About 250,000 foreigners choose to call it home, and it's also known as a very friendly place and easy to make friends. Local people also prefer to eat in groups and communities, so it can be really easy to meet people. On top of it all, Malaysia's wildlife is hard to beat. The rainforests are home to endangered species like orangutans, tigers, and turtles. Just by visiting, you'll have a lot of opportunity to see wildlife on treks, dives, and other adventures. Malaysia is also well loved by expats and digital nomads alike for the low cost of living, which of course is prevalent throughout Southeast Asia, but here you get the English speaking as well as the low cost of living and great nature and amenities, modernity, healthcare, so it really is a great place to live. As far as cost of living, it really depends on where you live within the country, but many people report being able to live very comfortably on one or $2,000 per month. Private hotel rooms in the capital of Kuala Lumpur start as low as $15 per night, and it's also a great country to find cheap and delicious street food. Malaysia ranks just behind Thailand and Singapore for the third best healthcare in the region, and if you become a resident there, then you can opt into the local healthcare system. Malaysia is also a great base to travel to other parts of Asia. Many people prefer living in Kuala Lumpur for its international airport and growing startup scene. But also check out Penang, which has a more laid back vibe with all of the amenities you need 
plus a growing number of co-working spaces. Of course, living in Malaysia can come with some downsides. For one, the very hot and humid climate. Pollution can also be a problem. You may have seen some photos or videos of trash collecting in waterways, and Malaysia is also one of the largest exporters of palm oil, which can have a devastating impact on the environment and local species. Next up is Belize, the only country in Central America where English is the official language, although Creole and Spanish are also widely spoken. The population in Belize represents a diverse mix of cultures, including English, Creole, Mennonite, and Mayan natives. While English is the official language, you'll also find people speaking other languages there and also a mix of indigenous languages. If you love the beaches and jungles, Belize offers plenty of opportunities for adventure. There's a lot to enjoy from diving and island hopping to exploring Mayan ruins. The weather is warm, but not as warm as the people potentially who are often described as friendly, helpful, and welcoming. If you're interested in moving to Belize, well, the government has made it pretty easy and straightforward for you to do so, including with their retirement visa that you can apply for as young as 40 years old. Belize also has their digital nomad visa, which is called the work where you vacation visa, pretty appropriate. And you can qualify for that if you earn at least $75,000 per year coming from outside of Belize or $100,000 per year if you are a couple or family. If you're working online in North American time zones, Belize falls into the central time zone with flights back to Canada, Mexico, and the US only a few hours away. Popular areas for foreigners include Ambiguous K, K Calker, and Placencia. Placencia is on the mainland and has the easiest access to amenities, but it's also beautiful and tropical. One thing to know before you move to Belize is that there are mixed reviews on the quality of healthcare there, with many expats preferring to travel home to get care and then come back. Belize is also said to have some slow bureaucracy and infrastructure, so if you wanna order things in the mail or from Amazon, things like that, it could take longer to get there because, you know, tropical time. And while the cost of living is pretty reasonable, there is a high tax on imported goods, so special food items, electronics, things like that can get expensive. Because the economy relies heavily on tourism and agriculture, poverty is prevalent, especially in rural areas with fewer economic opportunities. And this paired with safety concerns can bring some added challenges to the decision to live in Belize. There are some mixed reviews on the connectivity in Belize, whereas some people had pretty good experiences with the Wi-Fi and infrastructure there, other people reported blackouts and also cell phone tower outages. So if you're going to be traveling anywhere in the world where you want to make sure that you have good internet with you, then make sure to get one of the international hotspots that I use. I'll link to that in the description below. And if you think that the power might go out, then you'll want to get a UPS universal power supply backup battery. And I'll also link to one of those on Amazon below. Once a Dutch territory and later colonized by Britain, South Africa has a high number of English speakers. But that's not all. The country has upwards of 11 official languages, including Afrikaans, Zulu, and English. The number of languages spoken in South Africa is just one indicator of how diverse this country is. Since apartheid ended in the 1990s, South Africa has been dubbed the Rainbow Nation, celebrating its unique diversity and acting as a symbol of hope for the future. But despite the apartheid ending, there are ongoing issues there with income inequality, unemployment, poverty, crime, and government corruption. South Africa is a great place to be though if you love the outdoors. Geographically, it's one of the biggest countries on this list with plenty to see, do, and explore. Take your pick from a number of beautiful landscapes and varied climates, from coves and beaches to deserts, cliffs, waterfalls, and wine country. 
Whatever you like, South Africa has it all. South Africa is also home to some of the most important archaeological finds of all time, including the Cradle of Humankind. Some of the oldest human remains on Earth have been found at this one-of-a-kind UNESCO heritage site. If you're tempted to explore all that South Africa has to offer, the country does offer a retirement visa and a digital nomad visa is also in the works. A standout option for a place to live in South South Africa would have to be Cape Town. There is quite a diverse international community living there, but of course one of the downsides of living there is the crime rate. So this is one of those places where you'll want to be extra careful, whether you're in Cape Town or Joburg. But as I mentioned, concerns around South Africa's crime rate and safety are something to consider. It's important to exercise caution there no matter where you are avoid walking alone at night, and always take note of your surroundings. Ireland is also a very popular English-speaking country for international residents. While Irish is the first official language of the country, upwards of 98% of the population also speak English. Ireland is known for its emerald landscapes, friendly people, famous writers, and musicians. It's a good place for Guinness, of course, but Ireland also has the second highest number of tea drinkers per capita in the world just after Turkey and before England. Ireland has pretty good health care, especially compared to the US when it comes to cost, but the downside of living there is definitely the cost of living overall, especially when it comes to housing and especially if you'll be living in Dublin. Dublin is another one of those capital cities that's attracted a lot of multinational companies and those companies need employees. So while they do hire locally, they also bring in a lot of employees from abroad. So so this has put a lot of upward demand on housing, a lot of upward pressure on prices, and a lot of limited availability, which has really made the local people quite angry. Cork, Galway, and Waterford are a few options. Ireland's in a good location when it comes to exploring the rest of mainland Europe. They also have international flights around the world and a lot of discounted flights through airlines such as Ryanair. Besides the high housing costs, the other major downside of living in Ireland is the climate, although it does seem to have gotten a bit warmer and sunnier in recent years. But if you're not a fan of clouds and rain, then this might not be the place for you. Known as one of the cleanest, greenest, and safest countries in the world, Singapore is definitely at the top of our list when it comes to popular places for foreigners to relocate. Singapore has four official languages, Malay, Mandarin, Tamil, and English. Singaporean children learn English plus one of the other national languages in elementary school, making them bilingual or even trilingual. English is Singapore's official language when it comes to business, law, and government. It is a very business-friendly climate, so it attracts a lot of multinational companies from around the world, a lot of expatriates who are on work assignments in Singapore for a few years. It's not as big with the digital nomad community, simply because of the high cost of living there, but it does draw many English-speaking international students. Finding a job opportunity in Singapore in English is possible, but your work visa will be tied to your employment contract. So if you want to switch jobs in the future, that could get complicated. Outranking Japan as the number one best healthcare in the world, Singapore offers subsidized public healthcare for residents with private options available. The caveat is that expats can't access it. They typically have to have their own insurance or pay out of pocket. As I mentioned, the cost of living in Singapore is one of the things that turns foreigners away from living there. If you don't have a cushy work salary, going out to dinner for two could easily cost upwards of $100. So a lot of people like to take advantage of the more affordable street food in Singapore, but where it really gets expensive is housing. Singapore's landmass, which is smaller than all of New York City, limits available properties, and because construction was halted 
during COVID, builders have struggled to keep up with demand since then. If you can find a place to live there, then don't be surprised to see your rent prices starting at around three or $4,000 per month. If those prices don't scare you off though, then popular expat neighborhoods include Orchard Road, River Valley, Tanglin, and Holland Village. Which of these countries are you the most interested in living in? Let me know in the comments below and watch these videos next to find out the top 10 best and worst places to live in the world according to expats.